Hi everyone, in this video I'm continuing to work through question 6 part C of the HSC extension 1 exam from 2008. I've already worked through part 1 in a prior video so have a look at that if you haven't already and in this video I'm going to focus on part 2 which tells us given that 1 plus x to the p plus q on x to the q is equal to 1 plus x to the p times 1 plus 1 on x to the q Apply the binomial theorem and the result of part 1 to find a simpler expression for 1 plus PC1 QC1 plus PC2 QC2 and so on, all the way up to PCP QCP. So yeah, let's take a look. So um, basically, we, we're, we're given this um, steer that what we worked with in part 1 can be written into two parts like this and we're asked to find a simpler expression for what right now looks like a pretty messy expression and the hints are that we should use the binomial expansion and our result in part one and if you've seen my video from part one you'll know that that was all about taking this this term that we've currently got on our left hand side and finding the independent the term that's independent of x and we worked out that that would be p plus q c q. So I guess if we're going to be relying on part one, in essence what we want to do is take this right hand side and do the same thing. Use the binomial expansion and look for the terms that are independent of x because we can set those equal to each other. In other words, the terms on the left hand side that are independent of x being just the one that we worked out in part one that will by definition be equal to whatever terms are independent of x over here on the right hand side. So that's the basic strategy. So it probably helps to just work through each of these parts one at a time in terms of the binomial expansion and then bring them together through multiplying. So let's start by saying that uh, 1 plus x to the p, we can expand that as being the sum from k is equal to naught to p of p, c, k, x to the k. So that's going to expand out as p, c, naught, x to the naught, plus p, c, one, x to the one. Because um, we've got some twos in here, I'll, I'll write the, sec the, the next term p, c, two, x to the two, and so on. And we're gonna go all the way up to p. So we get p, c, p, x to the p. So that's our first term of the right hand side. Um, items that are being multiplied. So now the second one will be 1 plus 1 on x to the q will be equal to the sum from k is equal to naught all the way up to q of q c k times 1 on x this time to the k. And it's worth remembering that um, p is less than or equal to q. So if we're going to be counting all the way up to Q, we're going to hit P on the way there. So um, keeping that in mind, we can expand this as Q C naught on X to the naught plus Q C one divided by X to the one plus Q C two on X to the two and so on. And along the way, we're going to get up to P. So we'll get Q, C, P on X to the P, and then we'll keep going and eventually we'll get up to Q. We'll get Q, C, Q on X to the Q. So now what we want to do is multiply these two expansions together, but really keep our focus on what's going to cancel out to get in terms that are independent of X. So we can say, um, therefore, 1 plus X to the P times 1 plus 1 on x to the q is going to be equal to um, p c naught x to the naught plus p c 1 x to the 1 plus p c 2 x to the 2 and so on up to p c p x to the p and that's all multiplied by q c naught on x to the naught plus Q C one on X to the one plus Q C two on X to the two and so on. And we do have this Q C P on X to the P 
and then we keep going and eventually we get to um, QCQ on X to the Q. So to expand this, we're going to basically multiply each item from this first set of brackets against all of the items. So um, first we'll have the P C naught X to the naught multiplied by the Q C naught on X to the naught. And notice these X to the noughts will cancel out to give us a term independent of X. And then we'll have the P C naught X to the naught multiplied by all of these other terms. But I don't really need to write those out because I know they're all going to um, simplify to still have an X value in them. So I'm just going to go plus dot dot dot. And then um, it's only worth really writing out the next term where the x's are going to cancel. So we're going to have this pc1 x to the 1 times qc0 x to 0, but that's no good to us because there'll still be an x in there. But then we'll get our pc1 x to the 1 times qc1 on x to the 1. And notice the x to the 1's will cancel to give us a term independent of x. So that's worth writing. And then we keep going because even though this will multiply against all the other items, they're not um, helpful to us. So then eventually we'll get a um, PC2X to the 2 times the QC2 on X to the 2. And then um, we'll keep going and then we'll get a PCPX to the P times QCP on X to the P and then we um, in theory keep going with that PCP X to the P until this last term but again uh, we don't really need those because they're not going to um, end up with terms that are independent of X. So therefore we can write this as being um, equal to uh, these cancel, these cancel, these cancel and these cancel. So we get PC naught QC naught, which really is just 1 times 1, so we can write that as 1, which um, lines up with this one here. And then we get um, plus PC1 QC1 plus PC2 QC2 um, and so on, plus uh, PCP QCP. And then plus all the other terms that I've kind of just skipped over because I've written all of our terms that are independent of X all kind of together and then you can just add up everything else, you know, on the end. But um, therefore, what we can conclude is by equating terms independent of X on um, the left hand side and the right hand side of our of our um, equation up here, we can say that the terms independent of X of this left hand side we worked out from part one was P plus QCQ. So we can say P plus QCQ is equal to all of these terms independent of X here. So 1 plus PC1 QC1 plus PC2, QC2, and so on, up to PCP, QCP. And that is uh, exactly the expression that we were trying to simplify. So we have found a simpler version. It's literally just this one value here, P plus QCQ. Boom. So hopefully that made sense. I think it's really just a repetition of the techniques we were doing in part one albeit we had to do the expansion twice now on each of these components. And then just be really careful with our multiplying, um, being careful only to really um, hone in on those items that we knew would have the X's cancel out to get terms independent of X. And then it's just using that classic technique of uh, equating terms on left-hand side and right-hand side that are equivalent. In this case, it's terms that um, they're not a coefficient of x or they're independent of x. So yeah, there you have it for that question and uh, tick boom.